When Jamal Lewis got a job as a janitor at Asterisk Jenkins and Co. Asterisk Comma, he thought he was just doing what he had to do. The job wasn't too hard. Come in the evening after the office emptied out and get everything ready for the next morning. Simple work, decent pay. He didn't dream of big achievements. He just wanted to support his family, his wife, who taught elementary school kids, and his two sons, who were still in school. Jamal was one of those people no one notices. Every day, the employees rushing to work would pass by him without so much as a glance. No one knew his name, no one asked about his life. In their eyes, he was just the guy who cleaned their trash and polished their glass desks. His job was to remain invisible. But for Jamal, this was just part of the life he had grown used to. He knew the system was set up to keep people like him at the bottom. A black man, raised in one of the poorest neighborhoods in Detroit, he had seen how prejudice broke people. Too many of his friends and relatives had been stripped of opportunities, cornered by a system that never worked in their favor. He had learned not to expect much from life, beyond stability, and a few hard-earned dollars at the end of the week. Yet, deep down, Jamal always had a feeling that he could achieve more if the circumstances were different. He often thought of his father, who used to tell him, You always need to know your roots, son. You have to understand that you'll always have to fight for your rights. Jamal's father had been an activist in his day, fighting for black equality and joining protest marches, but he passed away when Jamal was still a teenager, leaving his son with blurred memories and a deep sense of loss. One night, as usual, Jamal started his shift. Everything was the same, empty hallways, the hum of idle computers, paper coffee cups left on desks. He walked into the CEO's office to tidy up, the usual route, the usual routine, but when he approached the trash can, something made him freeze. The can was overflowing with papers, not just crumpled drafts or empty envelopes, but important looking documents with seals and signatures. Jamal wasn't one to pry into other people's business, but this time something caught his eye, a seal on one of the documents. He leaned over, pulled the papers out of the trash, and slightly crumpling them, started to skim through. At first, he thought it was a mistake. The papers he held looked official, these were legal documents concerning the ownership structure of Asterisk, Jenkins, and Como. Nothing seemed strange at first, but when his eyes landed on the line with the shareholders' names, he saw something that made his heart skip a beat. Asterisk Jamal Lewis. His name was listed among the company's owners. Everything inside him flipped. How could this be? He was just a janitor. No one in the company knew him personally, and he was never invited to shareholder meetings or anything like that. How did his name end up on these papers? At first, Jamal thought it had to be a mistake. There was no way he could be a company owner. He didn't even know his family had any connections to Asterisk, Jenkins, and Commodores. But everything started to make sense when he remembered the stories his father told him as a child. Jamal's father, James Lewis, was a man many remembered with respect. In the 1970s, he had been an active participant in the civil rights movement, fighting against racial discrimination in large corporations. James often mentioned his connections with big companies and the success he had achieved, although these stories were rarely detailed in their conversations. Jamal sat in the dark staff room, holding the papers, thinking, could his father have been connected to this company? Could he have owned shares that Jamal had never known about? But why had no one told him? Why was this a surprise to him? And why had the documents just been thrown away? He sat for a long time, considering every possibility. One thing became clear. This wasn't just a mistake. It was something bigger. The next morning, Jamal walked into the office with a confidence that felt unfamiliar to him. He decided he wasn't going to stay in the shadows and would seek answers. The first thing he did was head to one of the senior manager's offices. This man, to Jamal, represented everything wrong with corporate culture. A middle-aged white man, always in an expensive suit, with a look of disdain whenever he had to deal with people beneath his status. When Jamal walked in, the manager didn't even look up. What can I help you with? The manager's voice was cold, formal. We need to talk about these documents, Jamal said, placing the papers on the desk, trying to stay calm even though he was boiling inside. The manager finally glanced at the papers. His expression changed instantly. First a slight smirk, then surprise, and finally, worry. What is this? Where did you get these documents? 
The manager's voice was different now, barely concealing his unease. It doesn't matter where I got them. What matters is that my name is listed among the company's owners, and I want to know why I was never informed about this. Over the next hour, the manager tried to come up with excuses, explanations, but they all rang hollow. Jamal could feel there was something bigger behind these papers, something the company had been hiding for years. After that conversation, Jamal started taking action. He contacted lawyers and filed a lawsuit against the company. What began as a quiet legal dispute soon turned into a loud court case that drew media attention. Public opinion exploded. Social media was flooded with hashtags bearing Jamal's name. People supported his fight for justice, seeing his story as a reflection of a deep systemic problem. A black man who was seen as invisible had suddenly become a symbol of the fight against corporate greed and racial discrimination. Many began recalling his father's story. It turned out that James Lewis had indeed been one of the first black shareholders of a large company at that time. His role had been downplayed, and after his death, the company had done everything possible to erase his legacy. When Jamal won the case and officially became the owner of the company, his life changed dramatically. But more importantly, he changed. On the surface, his status, financial situation, and role in society transformed instantly, from invisible janitor to the owner of a large corporation. But inside, Jamal began his true transformation, and that turned out to be much harder. At first, he felt fear. He doubted whether he really deserved the success. The voice in his head often whispered, you're not the person who should be in this position. People will soon realize you're an imposter. This imposter syndrome was a powerful force that kept him trapped in self-doubt. But gradually, day by day, Jamal started to understand that his value wasn't defined by where he had been or how others saw him. He began to use his past experiences as a source of strength. He knew what it was like to be in the shadows, to be the one no one noticed. That gave him a unique perspective that no other company leader had. Jamal focused on changing not only the company, but also himself. He was no longer the man who silently accepted injustice. He had learned to hear his own voice, and that voice was filled with confidence. He started making decisions that helped not just the business, but also those who had been ignored by the system. He stopped seeing himself as a victim of the system and began to change it. His personal transformation lay in the fact that he no longer saw himself as someone whose life had been limited, but as a leader capable of changing the world around him. And this new Jamal was certain of one thing. His story wasn't about money or status. It was about how a person can find their strength despite everything stacked against them.